Hello, chemistry students. Today we will be continuing our qualitative analysis experiment with the hydrogen sulfide group, or group two. The ions we will be testing for in this group are lead, copper two, bismuth, and tin. Let's get started. We will begin this procedure with a test solution containing our lead, copper two, bismuth, and tin ions. We can also begin this procedure with our S1 solution from the chloride group or group one. We're going to add 10 to 12 drops of one molar thioacetamide to our test solution. We will then place our test solution in a hot water bath for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, we will centrifuge the mixture. This is what our mixture looks like after centrifugation. We then need to carefully decant our solution into another test tube labeled S3A. Solution S3A will need to be saved if we need to identify ions from the ammonium sulfide group or the carbonate group. However, for today, we do not need to identify those ions, so solution S3A can be discarded. We have relabeled our precipitate as R3 for residue three. To R3, we're going to add four milliliters of deionized water and four drops of six molar hydrochloric acid. We will then stir thoroughly and centrifuge. After centrifugation, we can discard our wash solution Make sure to save residue R3. We will now begin the separation of the copper and tin subgroups. To residue R3, we're going to add one milliliter of deionized water and five drops of six molar sodium hydroxide. We will stir well and then warm in a water bath for two to three minutes. After warming, we need to remove the test tube from the warm water bath and allow it to cool. After cooling, we're going to add five drops of 3% hydrogen peroxide to oxidize any tin 2 ion to the tin 4 state. We'll then stir and place our test tube back into the warm water bath until any effervescence ceases. We're now going to remove our test tube from the heat and we're going to add five drops of one molar thioacetamide and we're also going to add five drops of six molar sodium hydroxide. We'll then stir and warm again for two to three minutes in our hot water bath.
After heating for two to three minutes, we will remove our test tube from the warm water bath and centrifuge. After centrifugation, we will remove our test tube from the centrifuge and decant the solution into a new test tube labeled S4 for solution four. We will save solution S4 for analysis of the 10,4 ion. I have relabeled our residue R4 for residue four. To R4, we're going to add three milliliters of deionized water, one drop of one molar thioacetamide, one drop of six molar sodium hydroxide. We'll stir well and then centrifuge and discard the washings. To residue R4, we will add one milliliter of deionized water and one milliliter of six molar nitric acid. We will then warm residue R4 in our hot water bath and stir for several minutes to dissolve the sulfides. After the sulfides have dissolved, we need to centrifuge our test tube. After centrifugation, we will decant our solution into a small beaker and add two milliliters of three molar sulfuric acid. We'll then evaporate the solution until almost dry on a hot plate. After evaporating until nearly dry, we will remove the beaker from the heat and allow the beaker to cool. After cooling, we will add three milliliters of deionized water to our beaker and stir. After stirring, we will transfer to a new test tube and centrifuge. This is what our mixture looks like after centrifugation. We will then decant our solution into a new test tube labeled S5. Our white residue will remain in test tube R5 for residue R5. We will now perform a test for lead ion. To residue R5, we will add one milliliter of three molar ammonium acetate. We will then stir and warm in a hot water bath to dissolve any lead sulfate. After dissolving the white precipitate, we will add one milliliter of one molar potassium chromate 
to our solution and centrifuge. After centrifugation, you can see that we do have a yellow precipitate, which confirms the presence of lead ion. We will now perform a test for copper two ion. To solution S5, we're going to add a six molar ammonia until the solution is basic. The appearance of a darker blue-violet color in solution proves the presence of copper two ion. After centrifugation, you can see within our S5 test tube that the blue solution indicates a positive presence for the copper two ion. And the white precipitate indicates a positive presence for the bismuth ion. We will now discard the solution from test tube S5 and the residue remaining will be the residue R6. We will now perform the test for bismuth ion. To residue R6, we will add one drop of six molar sodium hydroxide and one drop of 0.1 molar tin 2 chloride. We will then stir well and centrifuge. After centrifugation, the appearance of a dark gray precipitate proves that bismuth ion is present. We will now perform the test for tin ion. We will use solution S4, which we had previously set aside. We will add three molar sulfuric acid dropwise to solution S4 until it has been neutralized. We will then add excess three molar sulfuric acid equal to one third the volume of sulfuric acid needed to neutralize solution S4. After we have added the required amount of three molar sulfuric acid, we will centrifuge our test tube. This is what our test tube looks like after centrifugation. We can discard the solution The dark precipitate indicates the presence of tin ion. Okay, students, that concludes our tests for the hydrogen sulfide group ions. Thank you for joining me for this experiment.